has tested our hope and faith as individuals, families, and the country at large. Besides destroying many aspects of our lives, the novel coronavirus has also affected our human rights in many ways. You and the law, the COVID edition is a 30-minute weekly television program that focuses on the impact of COVID-19 on human rights in Uganda. The program engages experts to explain the importance of rights-based approaches to the success of any public health response to ensure the respect, protection, and fulfillment of human rights amidst the challenges presented by COVID-19. You and the Law, the television program brought to you by Legal Hub Uganda, taking the law to the last mile in proud association with I4C Africa Hub and House of Talent Television. We need everyone in the society to stand up, mm -hmm. like to really get together and form a relationship. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter the political party, mm -hmm. whatever. We need to, religion, we need to first put away differences mm -hmm. and come together and say we need to fight. We can't even fight COVID because we don't know much <laughs> about it. But yeah. how do we protect people? Yes, they're saying immunization, but the children can't be immunized. Mm. And I was looking at children living with HIV, mm. AIDS. Mm. During that lockdown, how they were they getting their medication? It was hard. Mm. Then we were, there were those children with cancer wow. who, who were told to go back home. Mm. And then it is later that they started trying to get doctors on motorbikes to go and <laughs> take, deliver, deliver mm. the medication. Mm. But see, when they, there's a break in their medication, it mm. brings it brings more other difficult it brings more issues. Yeah. And no one talked about the children who died <laughs> during that time because of medication, mm. not having medication in time and what, mm. or who are falling back in their things. So we need to learn to have a standby we have to have community maybe say there are paralegal paramedics oh, yes. in the in the communities mm. and these paramedics should reach out to every it should be in every parish every mm. village we should mm. have paramedics <music> Welcome to yet another episode of You and the Law, the COVID edition here on House of Talent Television. This show is proudly brought to you by Lego Hub Uganda in partnership with I4C Africa Hub. You and the Law is simply what it states. You and the Law, we explain the relationship between human beings, between us people, and the law, because the law guides every aspect of our lives. This particular edition of You and the Law is dedicated to COVID-19. How has COVID-19 affected our human rights? Over the last episodes, we've tackled different human rights that have been affected by the pandemic. Today, we look at children. How has COVID-19 affected children's rights in Uganda? What are the issues that are emerging because of COVID-19 as far as children are concerned? What do we need to do to protect children in these hard times? With me in studio is Ms. Sarah Awelo, the lead counsel for GBV at the Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity. Sarah, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, how have you been? Oh, I'm okay. I've mm. been fine. Mm. Well, COVID gave me some rest. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mm. And, and, and in terms of work, because I know a lot of things have changed uh, over the years, how has it affected your, you know, your work life? A lot of things have changed, yes. Sometimes you work from home, but you know, being legal, it is hard to fully work from home. Uh, so you have court, home, in between. You Sometimes you're torn. You mm. say, today we are going to have court mm. online or we are going to stay from. Then it's hard to meet your clients. You yes. just see them via the video link. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a crazy time, but hopefully things will normalize. Um, you come from UCLF, the Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity. Perhaps for a person who could be hearing this for the first time. You could give us a little bit of more information about the organization that you work for. Uh, Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity is a membership organization. It's a legal aid. We provide legal aid to, to people who could not afford money or 
any amount of money, especially family, mm. land matters. Mm. We also provide legal aid to the children, juvenile justice. Mm. So we have all that. Then we also handle GBV, gender-based pro gender violence okay. programs, mainly in Kayunga. Mm. Yes, yeah, so we are those places. So your services are completely free? Our services are free. Oh, interesting. And in terms of the name of the organization, uh, the, the Christian aspect of it, and somebody could be tempted to ask, uh, are your services restricted to only a particular uh, group of uh, people who subscribe to a particular faith, or it's open? No, 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 no. We, 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 we handle everyone, mm. everyone. You see, everyone is a child of God. <laughs> <laughs> so we handle everyone as a child of God. Yes. We believe we are missionaries, and oh. we are doing that by working, helping people in the legal Mm. in a legal way. Mm. So for us, maybe we may not stand on the street every day to preach, mm. but we shall go to court, ah. we shall fight for people's rights every day. Okay. Yes, I mean, that's how we shall preach. I think it's an interesting approach, you know, to missionary work by providing an actual service. And so today we talking about COVID-19 and, um, you know, how it has uh, affected our lives and we're specifically having conversation around children. Um, but perhaps before we delve into much detail, we could try to understand from you before we even talk about the law. What is this whole idea of children's rights? Why do they, why do they matter? Why should somebody lose sleep over rights of children? Um, what's the value of children's rights? You see, children. Uh, all of us have become. All of us were once children, uh -huh. and the children. Let's say we are. The, it's the future of the nation. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how it's sung. <laughs> children are the future of the nation. Mm. But how do we build a nation with broken children? Mm. So we need to protect these children so that we, we have a strong nation, we have a better future. Mm. I think that's why the rights of children have to be protected, so that mm. we may have a better nation in future. Mm. Yes. Uh, so children represent, uh, you know... Uh, a nation. The, the nation and, and, and from a futuristic... I think it's a very interesting angle uh, to this. But then now we move to talk about children's rights. Um, as you've explained, uh, children are the future of the nation and we should protect them. Is there a law that provides for that or is that just your wishful thinking? Where do we derive the mandate to talk about children's rights? If the rights of children are protected by our constitution, mm. the 1995 constitution as amended, mm. then we have the Children's Act, mm. then there are those conventions, the international conventions that Uganda decided to sign mm. and be a part of. We have the 1985 UN Convention on the Rights of Children yes. and then the 1990 African Charter on the Rights and Welfare of the Child. Mm. So all that are some of the laws that protect children mm. that but Uganda ascribes to. Okay, but in terms of then the, what exactly do they actually provide for? Like, what are those rights if you do tell a random person that these are children's rights. What could be examples that we can share? Well, they have a right to live with their parents mm. or guardians. They have a right to education, a right to practice the religion they know, ah, a right to... <laughs> yes. Very important for UCLF. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very uh -huh. important. Uh. A right to, to shelter, to medication. Mm. They have their rights. Mm. Yes. So, the, the, um, but then if you move further, and talk about those rights. Whose duty is it to provide them? Because you know there's been a lot of conversations around, uh, you know, in Africa, parenting children is a, a societal issue. But then you're discussing it from a human rights angle. So who bears the obligation to ensure that actually uh, these rights are protected? See, in Africa, the, the children are for the whole village. But <laughs> <laughs> okay, currently it's changing. Those yeah. days it used to be, mm. I think the days of our parents. Mm. Um, but currently, who protects the children apart from their parents? Mm. You know, sometimes even the relatives do not protect them. Mm. So we have also the welfare officer, like the government decides to put in place institutions to protect them. Mm. For example, the secretary for children's welfare in the local council. Mm -hmm. We have also the family and children's court where mm. we could run to when their rights are 
been infringed on. Mm. We have the probation and social welfare officers. Mm. We have the district probation and social welfare officers. We have all those people mm. to protect. Mm. But really the main, it is each of us, all of us mm. as individuals, even the children themselves, mm. they should protect their own rights. Um, some, some people argue that uh, children's rights fall under the broad category of human rights. I mean, there's, there's a, sort of a subcategory of, um, of, of human rights. And uh, there's this talk about you need to respect, protect, you know, fulfill these rights, which is put on the state. I don't know from, the, from your experience working with this, what does actually respecting children's rights mean in term, from the angle of the government? Let's say the right to live with your parents, mm. what should the government do to mm. help children to make sure that that right is respected? Mm. Parents, one thing government should also do is help the parents mm. have income or have something mm -hmm. to provide for these children. Because mm -hmm. when they start saying then we have a right to give, be given proper food, <laughs> <laughs> right to clothing, mm. we have medical care and a home, mm. if the parents are sleeping on the streets yeah then how will these rights be given to them mm. so i think with the government it has to start with the parents mm. Sh the parents should be given the the ability mm. or should conducive environment a conducive environment to mm. provide and protect the rights of these children okay and then in terms of the you know fulfilling this right uh, some people argue um, that you know it's important to have uh, you know, laws, policies in place. I wonder how Uganda is doing in that context, if you, from your experience as a, as a child rights advocate. Well, we have, we have very good laws, mm. yes. On children's issues? On children's issues, okay. we have. Run out through them, <laughs> run out through them. <laughs> <laughs> we have the Constitution, the Children's Act, where uh -huh. they, they give us very good laws toward the rights of children, the obligation, mm. how to ensure that they have proper health, education, mental, physical, and moral development. Mm. And our, own, our issue is implementing, mm. our implementing those laws, mm. and then also do people know those laws. Right now we are talking about the laws mm. and we are here in Kampala with an <laughs> upper <laughs> class talking about it. But what yes. about that that mother in Kayunga who has all those issues? Mm. She has no idea, maybe even that the children have rights. Mm. You know? For her, her work is to see them live every day. I, have, I got a saying in my work mm. with those the people in Kayunga when they say it, that children grow anyway. <laughs> Somehow they will grow. They, they will just they will grow. Yes. <laughs> it's hard. Even our crops don't just grow. You have yes. to weed. Yes. What? Yeah, uh, but you see, that's to them that's their belief. Somehow mm. they will grow. Mm. Mm. You you mentioned about the constitution and talked about the children's act. Perhaps we could spend a bit of more time understanding the children's act and uh, sort of its provisions on, on, on children's rights. What are they? salient features that we can you know talk about if you're to you know tell a random person about this children's rights from the angle of that act from the end of the act mm. a child is a person like below the age of 18. oh by the way we forgot even to understand <laughs> that yes a child is a person from that age of 18 mm. and then children's rights mean the basic needs that a child must have to ensure his or her proper growth mm. and development mm. I look at it, proper growth and development. Proper growth and development. It's yeah. relative. <laughs> <laughs> That's relative. Yeah. Cause, eh? uh. And a child will say, for me to have proper growth and development, I need cerelac. <laughs> <laughs> the other one will get up and go to a mango tree <laughs> and look for all <laughs> those small mangoes that have even not yet. Uh. So, so it's, it's re uh. relative. Uh. And uh. It's even under the act we say all oh, them they have their obligations so mm. sometimes we, we go so much on their rights yes. but see they also have an obligation mm -hmm. but like they said the obligation for them to go to school mm. and be obedient while at school mm. but a child to go to school on an empty stomach mm. unless he she he or she knows that at school they're mm. going to give me something to 
Some eat. porridge. Some porridge. So yeah. that one, it will be easy for the child to fulfill that obligation. Mm. But just sending the child to school, mm. and the child knows there's nothing for me to eat, <laughs> who will pass by the gardens, people's homes, uh -huh. look for mangoes. By the time they reach school, it is <laughs> midday. Yes. And then they get back. Yeah. So we yes, we have under the Children's Act those very good laws, the rights, the obligations, mm. but also we have our, we have the bats. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, mm. there, there's always a bat somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. So let's then switch gears because um. Uh, we're discussing um children's rights, uh, but specifically in the context of COVID nineteen, uh, which came and really. You know, forced uh, a government to do so many things, uh, and most of them really had a, a bearing on, on on children's rights. So I'll, I'll sort of start from from that point. When you assess when government of Uganda, when COVID nineteen came, what are those actions that government that, that government of Uganda took generally, and then perhaps later we can discuss how those affected children's rights. When COVID nineteen came, mm. I know the government was trying to protect its citizens, that's its work. Mm. Then it closed schools, it closed places of worship, mm. and then there were no places of leisure, were also closed, and it brought all that. It was good, they wanted to protect everyone from COVID-19, mm. prevent mm. death, that's mm. their work. Mm. And it has gone on, it's now two years. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Two years uh, for a child uh, who has always gone to church every Sunday or been taken to the mosque. I, I can notice your interest in church. <laughs> <laughs> See, and then all of a sudden there is uh, no going anywhere. Mm. They are stuck on the, let's say, the four walls. Yes. Inside the house, inside the gate, mm. or within the compound. Mm. And then they cannot go swimming they cannot go moving around with their friends yeah. roaming okay let me put in the village <laughs> playing space, even. playing yeah. you see going to the other neighbor mm. this where well, it, it it has brought a lot, a lot of, of problems mental yeah. <laughs> um, let's go for a quick break at this point and perhaps when we return back we'll have a deeper conversation around uh, the effects of covid 19 on children you're watching you and the law the covid edition you on house of talent television today we're discussing COVID-19 and how it has affected children's life, right? Let's go for a quick break. We'll be right back. When it comes to the law, mm. we, we basically live the law, yeah. you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, mm. you know. Mm. Whether it is in your bedroom, there is a law that governs it. If you're married, for example, yeah. even if you're single, there's, there could be something touching on the law yeah. because you might be in your bedroom with an underage girl <laughs> or you might be with another person's wife. You know, uh, all yeah. the things are, are, are the law. You mm. know? If you're a human being, you have rights. Mm. Those rights are called human rights. Mm. They are examples, the right to health, the right to freedom from torture. Mm that uh, underscores human dignity. Mm. Freedom from slavery, you're not supposed to be someone's slave. If you look at our penal code, yeah. it sets out, uh, and other marriage laws, it sets out the persons who can marry and those who cannot marry, mm. right? Mm. For example, you can't marry your close relatives. You know, if you did, you'd be committing a crime. The state is not supposed to tell you who to worship, how to worship, how many times is that? <laughs> no, you have a right to work. Uh -huh. A right to work. You have freedom of association. Mm. Cohabitation for, for whatever period of time does not make you husband and wife, wife. Uh -huh. right? And that is why we emphasize to people that when the marriage is, when the relationship is still hot, <laughs> you, know, you must ensure that you do what? Uh, Marry. Yes. You know? uh, for human rights to be respected, protected and fulfilled, relevant government programs must actually work. Medicine should reach hospitals, oxygen should be there, mm. health workers should have gloves, teachers should be present. Now they are mostly absent and they have left the profession a good number of them. <laughs> they are doing trading. So things must work. If things don't work, human mm. rights are not respected, mm. are not protected and mm. are not fulfilled. Mm. 
COVID-19 has tested our hope and faith as individuals, families, and the country at large. Besides destroying many aspects of our lives, the novel coronavirus has also affected our human rights in many ways. You and the law, the COVID edition is a 30-minute weekly television program that focuses on the impact of COVID-19 on human rights in Uganda. The program engages experts to explain the importance of rights-based approaches to the success of any public health response to ensure the respect, protection, and fulfillment of human rights amidst the challenges presented by COVID-19. You and the law, the television program brought to you by Legal Hub Uganda, taking the law to the last mile in proud association with I4C Africa Hub and House of Talent Television coming soon. Welcome back. This is You and the Law, the COVID edition here on House of Talent Television. My name is Jonathan Ocho, your host. Today we're discussing COVID-19 and how it has affected children's rights. And with me in studio is Ms. Sarah Awelo from the Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity, popularly known as UCLF, at least among the, among the lawyers. So Sarah, welcome from the break. Thank you. Yeah. So before we went for the break, we started um, the conversation around COVID-19, the action that government took to curb down the virus, and how it has um, affected children. You started from the angle of um, education. I'm actually started from church. Understandably, because you're from UCLF. Um, so we could carry on the conversation around some of the other aspects that COVID-19 affected uh, for children's rights. Yes, for example, now when the schools were closed, mm. and now the ones who are supposed to be in P1 have been in P1 <laughs> for the last two years. There are children who have never stepped classes mm. since the government closed. Mm. And you see, there's, now, there's going to be a big difference between the the children, like children mm. from that village and this one's from the mm. town. So, yeah, yes. city, so mm. there's going to be, I'll say an imbalance. Mm. There will be something wrong with that generation. Okay, I don't know how to put it, mm. but I think it will be like that. Mm. Because these ones, there are those who are studying, there are those who are not. Mm. There are those who can afford the private teachers at home, mm. and there are these children who have been seated at home. I remember uh, one time I was in Dokolo, mm. and I asked, we asked the children, they, they came and told me, ah, oh, no, we can't understand English. We <laughs> left those ones two years ago. And I'm like, okay. So I said, okay, can I give you a pen and you write your name that, ah, me, I forgot. <laughs> oh, you see? Yeah? Uh -huh. So there is that. Mm. And then when we come to the girl child, mm. there are those ones who have gotten pregnant. Mm. Hey, it's a big number. Yeah. And I just thought, if a, if one if a hundred girls get pregnant, those are hundred people supposed to hundred men or boys who are supposed to be in jail. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Okay. Yes, I, that, that, see, every time I see it in my mind, yeah. I'm like, I just hope I get like a hundred of those ones. Mm. They should be in jail. Mm. Th that's how it should be. Then there are those early marriages. Parents who have married off their daughters. Mm. So, so those ones are supposed to be in jail somewhere. Mm. So, um, <laughs> sorry um, they are supposed to be in jail. Mm. Why? Because they are not protecting these children. They are actually committing of criminal. They are committing, criminal. yes, mm. they are committing more offenses. Mm. So, for me, as I see numbers of girls getting pregnant, mm. I, see, I'm, I'm, I keep wondering, I also that same number or more in jail mm. because of the crimes have committed, yeah. you know, and then there are those ones of child-to-child -child sex, yeah. and in my head I'm like, have they cancelled those ones? But yeah. you see in Uganda we don't have those counselling services. Yeah. The, the probation officers are overwhelmed also. Yeah. But again, who cares to go to the probation officer to report yeah. or ask their child, yeah. like, oh, come and counsel my child has been going through this. Yeah. Um, I'll give an example. In Kayunga, one of the boys was arrested for defilement. Mm. So I meet with this this girl. In Kayunga we we handled our work is mainly like with the state, mm. with the state attorney. So I meet with this girl. I ask her she, we talk. 
And she was like, no, I just want him to be cautioned. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> Hey, wow. You want him to be cautioned and then mm. you want to go back to the same group. Yeah. It needs a mindset. It took mm. me, I asked to, took us like three hours talking to her. Mm. And then she, I told her, so what do you want to become? She actually wanted to become a teacher. I'm mm. like, so now when you get pregnant, how will you become a teacher? Because you'll have a child to look after. But for him, mm. he'll have to continue with his School. education and what. After some thinking, he was like, I need him to be kept away for some time mm. so that I, my mind can rest. Yeah. So we, we, we need a total, okay, what COVID has brought mm. has destroyed the mindset of children. That's mm. what I believe. Mm. And we need a, a change in the mindset of the children that it doesn't matter when schools are closed, you can still get a book and read. Mm. But where will they get the books also <laughs> from? <laughs> The libraries, uh, are closed. public libraries, do we even have them in deep in the villages? I mean, even in Kampala. Even in Kampala, yeah. it's countable. Mm. And who goes there? Mm. Remember, there is no trunk. When they closed completely and not moving everywhere, mm. who will walk to come and get a book for the child to mm. read? So we, we've had, COVID has brought a lot of... Mm negativity i would put it in the mm. lives of the children mm. there would have been post some positive things mm. if the parents were sensitized early enough mm. on how to raise children even when schools are closed. closed yeah um sarah you raised very very touching you know stories mm. uh, which i know you've picked in the in the course of your work mm. and um it, it, it's really chilling if you if you ask me but then I want us to have a conversation <coughs> around the measures that government put in place um, to curb down COVID-19 and I'll ask you how child-friendly were those measures what's your assessment of um, so for example you're hearing of you know distribution of food you're hearing about online learning you're hearing about all these you know things that they put in place how child friendly or what what's your evaluation of those interventions? What let's start with the positives. <laughs> what do you think worked? Yes, what do you think worked? Uh, there's a positive, like <laughs> thanks, thank you for for the for the those innovations like online schooling, mm, mm. but <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I sat if you look at somebody in Dokolo. That's mm. my village, so I can talk and I, I know I have. Mm. They, are, they don't even have radios. Mm. The government, I think, tried to give some radios. I, I don't it know if they never reached the reached. Oh, okay. it, I heard they were going to give radios. Mm. Where it died from, I don't <laughs> know. But, you know, it didn't reach. Mm. Then they started saying they would, they would distribute the books, like some books to mm. schools and what. Mm. But did those books reach to the village? You see, there is a village school. Mm. Then there is the village village school. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? Yeah. Even in the village, there's a town and yeah, there's a then village. there's a real village yes. yes so there's that village village school mm. did it reach the, do those who don't even have clothes to put on mm. can they afford a smartphone mm, mm, mm. can they sit and listen to ubc where will they get it from mm. me i i i think it would have been oh, would, government would have just built a community place where children in the <laughs> But that also would have stopped the COVID. Exactly. <laughs> Social know? distancing. Social issues. distance. Yeah. So let's, if you look at food, mm. food was distributed. They gave milk. Okay. But you see, that food will not take <laughs> the children for long. Mm -hmm. Let's say you distribute that food to a mother of eight <laughs> or five. Even just three. Or even just three. Mm. Would that food take them? It wouldn't take them for long. I think see, COVID surprised everyone. Mm. And I know the government was trying its best mm. to provide for its citizens. Mm. And it tried. Mm. But 
maybe we would we need proper structures mm -hmm. in the communities. Mm -hmm. We need the LCs to give us proper structures in the communities to say these are the number of children we have in the community, but these are their age brackets. Mm -hmm. So that even when the government is providing something, food, it's providing things okay, during the COVID times, it knows that mm. in this particular community, mm. we have this number of children, these are their age brackets. So let's say between 15 and 17 or 18, this one's let's provide them with, apart from sugar and what, I think they need pads, mm. or they need this. Mm. So we, the government tried, but it had some mm. up and down. Uh, you talked about you know, food, milk. I was about to ask you if some of your relatives in Dokolo uh, benefited from it, but perhaps <laughs> that can be a conversation for uh, for, for another day. <laughs> but 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 Sarah, now you work a lot around juvenile justice, mm -hmm. and I thought we could sort of pick your insights as well from the angle of juvenile justice. How did COVID influence? I mean, affect that area? Because I know even before that, children already were having conflicts with the law. And like many people argue that COVID just came and worsened the situation. I, I don't know what what your views you have you know, around that area. The juvenile justice. Mm. And children, maybe the most children ended up going on the streets mm. during this COVID time. Mm. They left school, they started looking for money. And I don't know how many will go back to school. <laughs> we have parents bringing children to the organization for us to counsel them mm -hmm. because w when they tried secondary opened a bit the other time mm. the children didn't want to go back <laughs> because now they were making money oh on the streets on the streets mm. some of them the parents like may took them to the garages to learn something so they felt Mm -mm, they have enough skills. They have arrived. They have arrived. <laughs> they don't want to go back. And you find the parents crying, saying, let them go back for some education and what. Mm. So there is that loophole going mm. on mm. that we need more guidance for the children mm. at this particular time mm. in this COVID-19. We are still in COVID-19 yes. times. Yes. Mm. We are still in. And then what I've seen, there was a lot of violence. Mm, in mm, the homes mm. and abuse in the homes. First of all, there was violence between the parents, mm. but their escape route was school. When school got closed, yeah. they got entangled in the violence of, in with that the in, with the parents, mm. and then they became the escape route. Oh, for venting their for anger. Venting the anger. Mm, mm. So they 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 got all the pressure all the pressure was thrown on them they were mm. beaten when the mm. see the mother again will blame it's because of you that's why i'm staying <laughs> so, so the child goes yeah. no mm. then the child is left i remember one enoch i won't give the other name mm. Mm. decided to even run away from home a child running away from home yes and he's dead Oh dear. And then we had to cancel him. The, well, by the time that we got him using police, mm. he said for him he's tired of the work at home. Oh. It's routine. Mm. And he wants to also start going and playing with his, pe his mm. peers. Mm. But the parents are saying, no, the peers go drinking and what we don't want him to be oh. a part of that. Uh, which is a fair point. Which is a fair point. Mm. But I think for him is like I'm tired of being in this thing. But four corners. Four corners. Mm. And he comes from a his parents drink also a lot oh. and what, so they leave him with all the work. So he said for him, he's tired of the work, he rather goes on the street mm. and vent for himself. <sighs> Sarah, you, <laughs> some of the stories you're sharing are, uh, yeah, you know, you know, quite chilling. Uh, viewers, you're watching You and the Law, the COVID edition here on House of Talent Television. Today we are discussing children's rights. How has COVID-19 affected the rights of children in Uganda? What do we need to do? How do we protect children further during these extraordinary times? Let's go for a quick break. When we return, we'll give a sneak peek into the future. How do we get out of the mess that we find ourselves now from the angle of protecting children? Let's go for a break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back from the break. This is You and the Law, the COVID edition here on House of Talent Television with me, Jonathan Ochom. Today we are discussing children's rights and how they've been affected by COVID-19. And with me in studio is Sarah Awelo, uh, lead counsel at, for the GBV, GBV program at the Uganda Christian Lawyers Fraternity. Um, Sarah, welcome uh, from the break. Thank you. Um, so we need to sort of um, look into the future. Uh, you've clearly given us really <laughs> chilling accounts of the different um, situations children find them, th themselves in because of COVID-19 and the different initiatives that, you know, that government has tried to do as well as parents. Um, now we need to think about um, anything that could happen five or ten years from now because uh, we're not sure when the virus is, will come to an end. Uh, we don't know if anything else could emerge in future. So as a country that calls for preparation. So now I'll, I'll, I'll now ask you, looking at what the government of Uganda has done, what lessons do we learn uh, from these interventions, from the angle of protecting children's rights? And perhaps later on we shall talk about uh, recommendations, but what do you think we learn from our current intervention, our current experience trying to protect children amidst COVID-19? Uh, what do we learn? We need everyone in the society to stand up, mm. like to really get together and form a relationship. Mm. Doesn't matter the political party mm. or whatever. We need to, religion, we need to first put away differences mm. and come together and say we need to fight we can't even fight COVID because we don't know much about <laughs> it. But yeah. how do we protect people? Yes, they're saying immunization, but the children can't be immunized. Mm. And I was looking at children living with HIV, mm. AIDS. Mm. During that lockdown, how they were they getting their medication? It was hard. Mm. Then we were, there were those children with cancer wow. who, who were told to go back home. Mm. And then it is later that they started trying to get doctors on motorbikes to go and <laughs> take deliver, deliver mm. that medication. Mm. But see when they, there's a break in their medication, it mm. brings it brings more other difficult it brings more issues. Yeah. And no one talked about the children who died <laughs> during that time because of medication, mm. not having medication in time and what mm. or who are falling back in their things. So we need to learn to have a standby we have to have community, maybe say they are paralegal, paramedics oh, yes. in, the, in the communities mm. and these paramedics should reach out to every, it should be in every parish, every mm. village, we should mm. have paramedics mm. so that if something happens like this in future, we have our paramedics already to reach out to children, mm. children with disabilities, children living with HIV AIDS, mm. you know, even the normal children when they fall sick. You see, moving was that you have to go and get permission first. Yes. But if we had paramedics in the villages, it would be so easy. We mm. wouldn't have this fall back a lot. Mm. And then maybe we should. I, even the parents who are not dedicated, I know they can teach <laughs> <laughs> math somehow <laughs> <laughs> in the local language. <laughs> Math, math can be taught in the local yeah, language. One plus one. Mm, with, uh -huh. with the stones and what. <laughs> but, uh -huh. but we should try and uh -huh. get teachers and pay them more on uh -huh. hard to reach areas. Uh -huh. Let's, okay, they're saying paying the scientists, but also the art teachers. Yes, uh, yeah. Because these art teachers are the ones going to teach ma English to the scientists. Mm, <laughs> and they need English to pass yeah, science. They need <laughs> English to pass science. So yeah. we need the, the art teachers also. But if we could pay them hard to reach area more money, mm. just because they are in those communities, mm. maybe build for them proper housing mm. facilities. Mm. So that even when this happens, we have teachers who will go reach out to villages to see uh. that the children are listen all the children are studying uh. at least twice a week if uh. a teacher appears before a child uh. and they go through some of the it's refresh yeah, it refreshes them and uh. tells them uh. stay with this next week i'll pass by uh. so we, we need that to to keep 
people to reach out to stay in the communities. Mm. What, what of in terms of um, juvenile justice, in terms of keeping children safe, uh, from the law ensuring that you know their rights, you talk about uh, violence at the family level, you talked about environment and kind of things. How do we, in future, how do we, what do we need to do to ensure that if we find ourselves in this situation, this is how we shall protect children against sexual assault, uh, for example. We need to empower our local community, our LCs. Mm -hmm. And also first we need to empower the children. Do mm -hmm. they know what a, the, the bad touch is? We were mm -hmm. just trying to teach them before they went to lockdown. Mm -hmm. Where do they go? Do they know where to go to? Most of them are threatened after defilement. They are told, don't speak mm -hmm. or else we'll kill you, we'll kill your family. Mm -hmm. Then some of them, <laughs> Like this one who said, I'm here. I was told to go and they told him, you stand outside, we are going to give you a TV. Mm. But these thieves were coming to rob the grandmother. Oh dear. But they told him, we shall give you a TV where you'll watch every day. Mm. <laughs> you don't have to ask permission or what. Mm. So they entered in the house for him, he stood to see that no one comes in. And then in the process, they killed the grandmother. Oh. So. It was during the burial that he kept saying, but this one was the last two. <laughs> These people entered in the house. Mm. Then they said, grandmother has died. So they're like, how did you know? So mm. he gives the story. Mm. So he was arrested and told to go and tell these other people, mm. take, take us to these people. Mm. So the only other co-accused were arrested. Mm. And maybe he was charged with murder. Oh, the child? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because he was in the whole chain. Mm. But he couldn't understand it, you yeah. know. But, and he kept saying, you most of them will call you auntie. Mm, that yeah. auntie, I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm like, yes, you didn't do it. Mm. I didn't kill. I'm like, yes, you did. It is those ones they entered. But if we could empower our children mm -hmm. and tell them that they have this obligation, mm -hmm. yes, they have the rights, yes. but they have the obligation, they have mm -hmm. obligations to, to respect the society, respect their children, they have obligation to do work at home, mm -hmm. they have, a, you know, the, we have something we expect from them, even mm -hmm. if we are giving them rights. Yes. So that they grow up knowing, mm -hmm. it's not about watching TV throughout, you mm -hmm. have to also do something. Mm. Maybe that would help them. Not so that people do not sweet talk them. How are we talking to our daughters? Yeah. How are we training our daughters? Will somebody give them say, if you come and I do this to you, or I touch your breast, I, I will give you five hundred. And it's a coin, a five hundred mm. coin. And most of them can say, and he gave me a five hundred coin to keep quiet. Mm. Or after being defended, it comes and say they gave me one thousand. Mm. Is there a way we can teach them about value? How mm. do they value themselves from young? Mm. You see, a child gets to understand from the time they are born. That's why they cry when they are hurt. <laughs> 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 yeah. So we need to teach value to the children from mm. when they are young. Mm. But value is good if the person teaching them also has value. Yes. So do the parents have value, value to pass over? So should the government also? So we need to empower the, the local council mm. to empower to empower the community. We need mm. to empower the religious leaders mm. to empower the community. We also need to empower this, the, um, the, the witch doctors, the <laughs> <herbalists>. <laughs> and teach them. Because you see, they are the ones who, mm. t when, you're, when somebody's arrested, mm. they'll say, uh -uh, the witch doctor told me if mm. I sleep with a girl, mm, I'll, my, problem will my problems will be solved. Mm. So if we teach this, this witch doctors mm. that the law says if they ever get you, if you are arrested, like even for sacrifice, mm. self sacrifice, mm. you will be penalized, you'll be held for murder, you'll go in for life. Mm. This is what the law says. There's a way they will trick, they will start telling the person, mm. your problems will be done, let me put something on your hands, mm. and then you go and work. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> The person just playing with your yeah, mind. they just yeah. play with their minds and go. Mm. I, I had an opportunity of talking to a witch doctor. Okay. <laughs> you you were seeking their services. <laughs> <laughs> we were sensitizing. Oh, okay. 
And you see in Kayunga, they are so proud to come and say how they are witch doctors uh -huh. because they are really respected in the community. Yes. So I said, okay. So we, we kept talking. And then I told him, but now instead of giving these women mm. who come and complain about their husbands, other husbands come and complain about their women. Mm. So he says for him what he does, he gets um, it's a herb. Mm. It's actually a herb. Mm. And then he tells them when he starts quarreling, you put it in your mouth uh -huh. and bite it. <laughs> so the lady keeps biting. So she doesn't reply to the quarrels. Then yeah. the man keeps quiet. Yes. And then she'll start saying, oh, my husband actually changed his step <laughs> quarrel. But she does saying, no, it's because she did not answer back. So there was no one to... There was no need for a fight. There was no need for a fight, uh, you know. Yeah. So if we need also to empower them, the herbalist, the... You see how Mama Fina tries to help out, yeah. but if we empower her with the law, yes. how much information more? on the law, yeah, yeah information yeah. on the law, mm. then she empowers her people. You mm. know, so many people follow her, mm. so we need to get those people who are mm. the community blessed, like the community look up to. Yeah, you you you, you mentioned about the child, you know, being charged uh, with a, a criminal offense, and I thought perhaps we'll take advantage of the, your presence mm. to talk about criminal responsibility for children because there's always emphasis on rights like you mm. correctly yes. said uh, but also to know children for children to know that you have responsibilities even during COVID-19 COVID you could just yes. run up through about you know what's the law the and, law know, criminal children's <laughs> responsibility at five years do they become no. uh, uh -huh. when they are they are when it's 12 years and when they're less than 12 years yes. from 11 they are mm. not criminal li they are not criminally liable uh, okay but I so you can do anything in that age uh, but you uh, see there we can uh. get the lc to beat <laughs> 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 i don't believe you just do something as a child and uh, walk away with it yes no uh, mm. but from 12 we, they, they, are, they are criminally liable mm. and they can be arrested, they are mm. taken to the remand homes mm. that, and we have remand homes all over Uganda yes. and the main one means camp, yes. that's how they pronounce it, it's law. Yeah. Is that on the Ye Masaka Highway? Yes, yeah. so they are taken there and mm. they are taken, they are taught, mm. they are taught on vocational training, making wood tools what but mm. they're trained from that side mm. though they're taken to the remand home at naguru where they're also taught but they are liable and but they also need to know that mm. so if we also teach them that from 12 years <laughs> we shall really jail you in the children's yeah, jail if you uh, if you misbehave mm. then there is also they i think they will also change their behavior mm. but also this one's below 12 like from 11 mm. downwards may i believe a children and a child will understand mm. which we will not be like whites all the time and say you're going to be taken to a punishment <laughs> corner and stand there no uh, i think a few two sticks will yes. get the person uh, hey, yeah. even the bible says spare the road and spoil <laughs> the child so we, we will not allow sparing the road because uh, what as i started we want a uh, children are the future of our nation mm. so we are not going to let them get away with anything mm. but we shall stick as the bible says spare mm. the rod, spare the child yes. no we are going to see that they are all brought up mm. in a godly manner mm. whereby in the future we shall have less corruption <laughs> <laughs> they indeed the future yes uh -huh. if we are, they have less corruption mm. they know the law mm. yes um, Sarah, as we, as we come to the end of um, this show, uh, just ask sort of your final concluding remarks. On, um, how do we then get out of this mess as a country in 30 seconds? How do we get out of this protect mess? Protect children, yes. And protect children. Mm. We all have to come together. Yeah. Doesn't matter about your religion, your party, your mm. what. Come together. Let us see in each of our neighborhood mm. who is who is the who is a teacher in the neighborhood. Mm. We need to be the eyes of the parents in the neighborhood. Let us go back to saying it takes a village to raise a child. Okay. Don't let somebody's child be doing something wrong, mm. and you just saying that's not my child. Take okay. responsibility. Okay, Sarah makes a very compelling point. We should take responsibility. We have to protect children during COVID nineteen by you know following the law empowering people with information so that they know 
that an extraordinary time like the pandemic is not an opportunity for you to exploit children, but rather to act and protect their rights. With that, we've come to the end of today's edition of You and the Law. I've been your host, Jonathan Ochom. Next week, we'll have another conversation on yet another human right which has been affected by the virus. Until then, bye.